Hello, my name is Sean Cavanaugh. I'm a technical marketing manager and network engineer that works on the Ansible automation platform for Red Hat. Today we'll be walking through a basic lab, your first playbook. It's a CLI only lab with Ansible Navigator. So let's go ahead and get started. You're gonna go ahead and navigate to ansible.com if you wanna perform this lab yourself. You click on learn, and then right here on the right, you'll see self-paced labs. You click on self-paced labs, there's a reg wall. It's completely free. We're just tracking use so that we can pay for the lab. So it's completely free and stays that way. So you'll get to a page that looks like this. Um, it can go straight down to Ansible Network Automation, and this is the lab we will start. And I already had it started, so this is what you'll get. So once you click on that lab, you'll click Launch. Um, mine's already ready to go, but there's a few slides in here that I'll go through. You can also have access to these slides at any time. It's just stored as YAML um, on the labs. So you can also look at github.com slash ansible slash instruct, and you'll see the source code for all these labs. So the lab objective today is to run an Ansible playbook with Ansible Navigator, understand the check parameter and verbose mode. We're also going to look at item potence and what that means. So what makes up an Ansible playbook? Ansible playbook is divided into plays. Plays have tasks which use modules. Tasks have a one-to-one -one correlation with a module. You can only have one module per, per task. And then plugins help enhance this experience. So you can think of this as a connection plugin. How do I connect to a network device? You could think of it as a filter plugin. How do I transform JSON to YAML or YAML to JSON? All of this is built into Ansible and we take advantage of a lot of things in the community like Jinja, like filters in Python, etc., and so on and so forth. So this is the play. The play is indicated as the top level within YAML. These three lines mean YAML. They're not required, but highly recommended. And if you use Ansible Lint or other things, it's gonna be looking for these three dashes. It also helps text editors understand that it's a YAML file. It's a top level specification for a group of tasks. So you can have multiple plays within the same playbook and they can have different targets. Meaning I could have a play that goes after hosts and a play that goes after network inside the same playbook. And these are the building blocks of playbooks. I highly recommend not doing multiple plays within the same playbook unless you have to. It's easier just to have smaller playbooks, but there's no restriction on this at all. Ansible modules, what are they? This is the components. So the module here is config. The namespace is Cisco. iOS is the collection and then config. So Cisco also has one for Annex OS. They also have one for iOS XR. And if this was an Arista box, it would be arista.eos.config and it would look very similar. Um, most, it's, what it's saying here is most of them are written in Python. Ansible's backend is mostly written in Python, but it doesn't have to be. Modules are actually executed on remote hosts. So for the example of Windows, we actually bundle up a PowerShell script and run that on the Windows hosts, and then it returns back to Ansible. Plugins, again, can be used to do interesting things like connection plugins. Um, there are tons of plugins across many collections. I highly recommend looking at the ansible.utils collection. If you're a network engineer, there's a lot of already built-in plugins to deal with IP addresses for IPv4 and IPv6, subnetting, um, and so on. There's a, there's a ton. There's even like my favorite filter, for example, is just flattening giant JSON objects because certain network boxes claim they have API support, but then they export these massive JSON blobs that are like not very human readable. But we have like a two paths that will basically flatten that object so you can get to the key of the object that you actually want to return. Ansible inventory. Inventory is just a list of things we need to execute. So here it can be this simple, it can be a DNS name. So the group web, we have web server one, web server two, the group DB, database server one, and then switches. I have my leaf switches for my data center here. It can be that simple. You can use a name and then put Ansible host and put an IP address so you can be more specific and have your name here not be the DNS name. They don't have to match, but it defaults to DNS. Roles. Roles are very simply when two or more people start working on the same playbook, it becomes important to have a reusable structure for people to understand how that playbook is laid out. So roles are incredibly important. And in other labs, I kind of have a network toolkit 
that you can use where I built a ton of roles. So network.toolkit.backup is a backup role that you can take advantage of. And you can see kind of how I laid it out. So it becomes more interesting as you graduate from using simple playbooks to having two or more people want to like contribute to that playbook. It's usually a good indication that that playbook needs to be turned into a role. Content collections are groups of multiple roles. It can contain modules, playbooks, roles, plugins, and then it kind of requires documentations and tests if you want to share that. So collections are kind of our app. It's our way to distribute content. So if I wanted to hand automation to a friend or a colleague, I would give them a content collection. Or if I wanted to execute it, I would actually create an execution environment. So with that, I've kind of gone way beyond what this lab will cover, but I think it's good to have background on those different subjects and understand what I'm talking about if I reference them. So it's there and for your knowledge, we will get started. So in the Instruct Labs, we use Code Server, which is very similar to VS Code, but not actually the same. Um, you can do a terminal window in VS Code here on the box. Um, you can also run it on this terminal tab. Um, you can expand your instructions left and right here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to uh, follow his uh, directions here. And what we want to do is run a playbook. So I'm going to go over to, or it's not router one, it is just called Cisco. It'll take a second just because it just booted. So we can do run and see that there's nothing there right now. So I'm going to go back to my terminal window. We're going to look at this playbook. And you can see that there's syntax highlighting in there. Let's see if I can zoom in. There we go. It's going to zoom in the whole window and it's embedded, but I think that'll make it a little bit easier for you. Um, I might zoom back out. Yeah, I think that's where, yeah, that's where it was. I'll just zoom in and post. So in here we see the playbook. There is cisco.ios.config, just like the notes at the beginning of this lab. There's commands. For this, we're going to just run a couple SNMP commands. And while this is very simple, I think this is really powerful, is we always encourage network teams to start small. Because imagine if I had a thousand switches in my campus network and I needed to just turn off an SNMP or modify an SNMP server configuration on them. Imagine it takes me, I don't know, 30 seconds as fast as I can per switch to log in and manually remove it. You can see really quickly, although I'm not really doing configuration management, I'm not doing like infrastructure as code, I can just modify in the basics of automation, passwords, SNMP configurations really quickly. So what would have taken me months of work to get to every switch and like change the SNMP configuration, I can now just run a one task playbook and get a lot of benefit from that really quickly. So SNMP, not very hard. I think the most junior of network engineers have configured something this simple in their lifetime. So we're going to go ahead and run this. I'm going to be using something called Ansible Navigator. So Ansible Navigator is a TUI. It is a new command line tool as part of Ansible Automation Platform 2. The reason we use this instead of Ansible Playbook is this allows us to take advantage of something called execution environments. We supply execution environments. They're basically uh, containerized Ansible runtimes. Now, this is really cool because no longer do I have to install all the dependencies. So for example, with network devices, I might need to install Paramico, which is a Python library for connecting to SSH on devices. I might need to install NetMiko. I might need to install uh, libssh. I might need to install an SDK for different network platforms. But now we can actually shovel those in a container and supply those really easily. So if I actually look in here um, at collections, I can actually look inside this execution environment um, the first time it takes a second. I can see really quickly in here, I have a ton of awesome collections. Most notably, the things I care about today are Ansible or Cisco.ios because I have one Cisco iOS XE device running on GCP just for the purposes of illustrating how automation works. And I can see all of the modules in here and it actually highlights older modules that it's containing that have actually been replaced by newer modules. So for example, the iOS L3 interface has been replaced with the iOS L3 interfaces and it does highlighting in here right for me and it tells you exactly when it's being deprecated. 
So it's really nice because Ansible Navigator not only lets you run execution environments, it lets you scan what's within those execution environments, and then you can kind of pin collections, the version of Ansible Core, um, and any dependencies. So back to the command line. I'm going to run Ansible Navigator. The difference between Ansible Playbook and Ansible Navigator is I'm just going to have this keyword run, and then I'm going to do the playbook name. And if I want the same kind of output as Ansible Playbook, I'm going to do dash dash mode standard out. And you can see that the playbook has run. And we're going to go over to the Cisco device. And we're going to run, show run, include SNMP. And we will see that it has configured the network device for us. So we can press the check. I'm going to check on the back end. On the back end is actually using Ansible to go and verify that I actually did what I was supposed to do in the lab. And it says I did. It gives me a green correct. Loading your next challenge. We're going to learn more about modules real quick. So modules do the work. We talked that they're typically written in Python, but it's not limited to it. So you can choose the language of your choice. Modules can be item potent. It doesn't mean that they are. Some modules like a command or shell where they just run arbitrary commands, they obviously can't be item potent. We try to make sure all resource modules for network devices are item potent, which means they're stateful, meaning they know what was already configured there, so they don't run the command unless it needs to. And modules take the user input in the form of parameters. So we have four types of modules. We have fact modules, command modules, config modules, which this lab is highlighting, and we have resource modules, which we cover in another lab. These are examples of different namespaces. I mentioned before Arista.eos, Cisco.ios, Juniper Networks. Um, I might be fat fingered there. Junips Networks. I don't think that's correct, but I will fix that later. So, with that, let's get started. We click the green start button, and again, we're in here. So, the config module is actually item potent. The one exception to that rule is that you have to use the commands in the way that the network device renders them. So if there's a shorthand, like you saw me doing show run pipe include whatever, that's a show command, so it's not a great example, but you have to use the long form of the command or however it's rendered in their running configuration because Ansible is checking what you're providing against what is actually existing in the network device. It has no concept of like short form shortcuts. So like the most common problem I see is people have like uh, network devices that say like 10 gigabit ethernet zero slash zero. And then some people put 10 G zero zero and like either will work as you're typing it in, but you need to make sure if you want item potency or the idea of state that you want to use the matching configuration that shows up in the running configuration. So basically we want to run this again. Now I typed the command manually, but you can just cut and paste it from the right in there. We press enter. You'll notice something really interesting. It's color coded out as green. Nothing changed. And what that means is it knew that the configuration was actually on that switch already. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a line to this playbook. And we want to make sure these lines line up. You can see that I have nice and easy helpers within code server. So we're adding a new group called Ansible test. It's read only. We're going to save this. So you can you can press since you can't see me on my, my keyboard command s. Um, so we're good to go. Um, we're also going to do check mode this time to illustrate a new mode. So it's dash dash check. So we'll go back over here. And we press enter. And you'll see that it's yellow. And it told me exactly, since we added the verbose command with dash V, that it's just going to add the one Ansible test read only. It's not going to add the other two that exist. Now, more interestingly, is if I go over to the Cisco device, and I do show run SNMP, it's not actually there. And that's the check mode. Check mode tells me what I would have done. This is also a great way to adopt automation incrementally, is that you can do check just to check things, and Ansible is only doing read only. 
So this is a way that you can run automation and not actually be configuring things, just kind of auditing what's going on. And now it's telling us to remove the check mode. So we can just press up on our keyboard, or actually I need to go exit back to the other box. And this time I'm gonna leave dash V, but remove dash dash check. You can also configure check mode in your playbooks. We're not covering that today, but you don't have to do it as a command line parameter. This time it changed. If we go over to the device, this time since check mode wasn't there, we will see that it's there. And most importantly, is if we rerun the playbook, we should see that the yellow goes away and we're green again. So the takeaways, config modules are item potent, meaning they're stateful. It has an idea of what's configured there and compares it against what we have. Check mode ensures that it's not actually making any uh, changes to the network device. Verbose mode is telling us the commands on the command line. It's great for troubleshooting. And finally, we can schedule this playbook in automation controller. We could have it in force configuration or even have it scheduled just to do checks to audit our configurations. This is a way we operationalize playbooks into production. So I really recommend checking out our other labs and checking out how automation controller works and how you could schedule jobs like this to check your SNMP configuration or just make it push button easy. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you take the opportunity to go and do the lab and walk through it and check out these other resources. I put the short URLs up. We have free eBooks. We have an entire workshop of content and we have a actual, a DO457 training course. Have a great day.